Hey guys, welcome back. We're back out with the uh, Matrice 300 RTK and we've got the H20T camera. We're going to do uh, a little bit of camera testing today and we have also got a, a DJI Air 2S and we're going to see if an Air 2S will follow another drone. So, let's get it. Alright, here we go. We're going to launch it. Do a couple of testing. All right, so we're going to go over a couple of things here. Uh, this is actually a screen capture from the Enterprise Smart Controller. Now, I wanted to use this to kind of show you some of the different features when you're switching in between the cameras. As you can see, I went from FPV to the gimbal camera, which is the H20T, and you can see the thermal there in the picture in picture. One of the really neat things about this Enterprise Controller is if you are the sensor or sensor operator you can take control of the aircraft at any time. Um, there have been instances where somebody had an emergency or even in the heat got lightheaded and felt like they're gonna pass out. So instead of having to pass controllers back and forth, you can take control right then and there. Um, we've already had and run into an emergency once before with the uh, tractor that flipped over and the guy was lucky he wasn't killed right in front of us. And we had to swap off and, and kind of take control like that. So. Uh, here you can see I'm just playing with the thermal camera. I'm looking at a tractor that he was using out in the field to uh, mow, the, mow the grass. So I just wanted to kind of go over that. I've got a screen capture of this, and we're gonna. I'm going to actually go through. I did a screen recording. I'm going to show you that in just a little bit here. Now, to cut through some of this stuff and make this video shorter, I'm speeding this stuff up two times in between some of the spiller material as I'm talking and explaining kind of what's going on with this craft here. Now, I'm not going to get into all the specs on this craft. Um, you can find all that stuff on DJI. It's a very large craft. It's got 21 and a half inch propellers. Uh, runs on a 50 volt battery system. It's got dual batteries, flight time of about 55 minutes. It can run single lower payload, single lower and single top mounted payload, and dual lower and single top mounted payload. Alright, so here you're going to see me switch between the RGB camera and the uh, thermal. RGB being red, red, green, blue, which is your visual. And you're also going to see me switch between the actual recorded file on the SD card of the camera and the smart controller. And it's primarily just to see the different options that's going on and actually how, how nice the feed is going to the smart controller. Um, although it's a small screen, uh, it's very responsive and the latency is very low and it's very easy to see so not much complaints as far as that goes so you can see i didn't have the range finder on at this point but uh the return to home point you can see at the top left part of the screen in the video feed and it shows that it's 120 feet away so that's the distance here uh, as you can see this is the thermal on the h20t uh, it's a 640 pixel thermal and at that distance it's still very easy to see a person and I'm switching back between the actual feed on the camera recorded to the uh, SD card and back to the screen to kind of show you the difference between them uh, and how everything kind of works out. I've flown a lot of, of aircraft over the years and I can tell you that this is by far one of my favorite uh, aircraft I've ever flown. It's an amazing, amazing aircraft. Um, it's not a cheap one. The batteries are very expensive their uh, 50 volt system um, but for what you're paying compared to some of these other craft you're getting a whole lot more with this aircraft it's agile it's very stable um, it's like flying a you know Mavic but it's you know it's three and a half feet across with 21 inch propellers so it, it's absolutely amazing all right I'm gonna speed this up so we can get through this I'm gonna push out here uh, do a little bit more testing. Primarily, I want to do some testing at distance with the uh, the H20T, checking out the optical zoom and the digital zoom capabilities of the camera, and uh, see how things work out there. All right, so as you can see here, I've got the range finder on. You'll see at the left of the screen below the zoom button is showing the actual range in feet, uh, altitude at the point you're looking at above sea level, and then the actual coordinates. Um, up at the top is showing the ADX. That's because the zoom camera is in an ADX mode, 
um, actually in the wide angle uh, lens right now. So I'm going to push out towards the end of the field and we're going to get out well, right around a thousand feet is what I was attempting to do. And I just flew out to where it looked like it was going to be about a thousand feet, turned around and went down to range myself. And you're going to see this. Uh, we're going to do a zoom test here with the camera and we're going to see how this camera works out. Uh, it's a really nice one. All right, guys, I'm out quite a ways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to range myself. I'm at an altitude of 100 feet. Um, I'm going to go to my zoom lens. I'm going to go to record. I'm gonna zoom out. All right, so now I'm recording. So I'm at 900 feet away. I'm at 80x zoom. I'm going to put this on the screen so you can see it right now. And um, you'll see the quality of it. Let me go to 40x. Back out. Go to 20x. The 20x is the native. 40 and 80x is all going to be digital. Get 160, you can see the Mirage, 200x zoom, lots of Mirage. I'm beginning to see the pixelization on this, but I mean even, that's 66x, that's 80x. So overall you can see that the uh, camera is quite effective, and even at that distance, uh, when you're getting into that digital zoom aspect of it, uh, it's quite good quality. Uh, 200x, you're, you're expecting to see pixelization, but uh, optical clarity at uh, 20x and even going to digital zoom at 40x is absolutely stellar. Um, so, great little camera. See, this is a pretty cool bird. See the face of it there. I'm going to switch to IR. We'll show you what it looks like on the screen here. Change the color palette. Yeah, I don't want to worry about that right now so much. Inch a little closer so you can see. Get a little better view of it, anyways. It won't let me go any closer because the uh, the detection obstacle avoidance. Pretty cool. So I figured we'd do a little walk around, let you get a closer look of it. Here's the front with the uh, H20T camera. You see it's a pretty wide bird and uh, pretty large, but pretty cool one. So. All right guys, one of the things I wanna kinda of show you here. So the cool thing about this uh, Enterprise Smart Controller and the Matrice 300, is the actual controller itself now it's a smaller screen because it's like the smart controller but there's some really interesting things that are happening with this obviously here you've got your bell which is your notifications this gives you your different warnings your ADSB tells you if there's a proximity a lot of different stuff pops up on this including wind warnings these are all the same things that have been around for a while this is a couple of different flight modes this is your beacon here and this is part of your range your focusing and uh, locking onto specific targets so you could fly around while tracking a target, kind of like an active track. I don't remember what this is here. I'll look at that again. But this is here for the laser rangefinder. This gives you a range. Now, this gives you your zoom. The really neat thing, you've got all the same camera functions here, just like any other drone, and then you've got your actual zoom on this side. Here you've got your picture in picture, and this will typically have your FPV, or if you're flying in your FPV, this will have your gimbaled camera, and it could either be IR, your wide, or your zoom on the H20T. It just depends on how you've got that set up and what options that you used as you went through them. This has your actual bearing here, so this tells you your actual heading, 
where your home is for your heading, which is really nice. If you're way out and you get lost in track of your yaw, you can tell which direction you need to turn in order to head back to your return to home. It tells you your distance the return to home is, and like right here, it's 120 feet. This gives you your altitude and feet from your takeoff area. And then this also gives you the altitude above sea level. But the really neat thing, you've got your speed here, and then these V's in here are actually your obstacle avoidance. And it'll show you green if they're, you're close, but you have room, yellow, and then red when it gets bad. And then right here is a really cool little thing. This is your wind speeds. So this thing, based off of how much thrust it's having to do to hold at hover, will tell you your wind speeds aloft. So that's a nice thing if you start to get intermittent wind warnings from gusts and you can kind of watch those and, and of course you've got your map here that you can expand and this here gives you with the H20T thermal you've got your infrared which is your thermal you have your wide angle and when you're in your wide angle it's a 24 megapixel wide angle camera and it will t say zoom for the switch to the zoom camera you still have your zoom setting up here that tells you and then you'll have an actual bracket that shows you uh, your zoom and what size the zoom is on the screen. So if you're flying around in your wide angle and you're trying to frame a certain shot, you can uh, see the actual output of what the zoom is gonna look like and where your crop is gonna be on that picture. So when you switch, there's no surprises. Of course, up here, you've got all the same typical stuff here, except for with the 300, it tells you your average time. Uh, for instance, we're flying the H20T we were at, or I was at 92% battery, and I still had 40 minutes of flight time left. Pretty amazing. Of course, you got all your same camera stuff. This is your SD card that tells you how much longer, as far as recording you have left on that SD card. So, really cool, really neat setup. So, I thought I'd go over that real quick and throw this in the video. Earlier in the video, we're talking about having the Air 2S follow this thing with the active track. Fortunately, they will only active track people, vehicles, or animals, and you can lock on to the subject to do your point of interest orbit, your corkscrew, your asteroid, and as you can see here, they'll leave you with a drone on the way out. Hey, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you wouldn't mind, if you like the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified when new content comes out. We've got a lot of good videos getting ready to come up, and I'm hoping to bring some good stuff to you. So, appreciate you watching. Thanks. We'll see you next time.